The major D at Dino's restaurant next door to 77 Sunset Strip was Mario. All this week, we're presenting reunions with some of the cast from your favorite old TV shows. Hang on here, just one second. You're not going to skate over this picture <laughs> that I took in the... Yesterday, the original Mouseketeers bounced in here, and later this week, we'll see the cast of Lost in Space, Perry Mason, and the ever-loving, holy Batmobile team of Batman and Robin. And today, we're going back to one of the most famous addresses on TV, where Cookie was always ready to lend you his comb. The address was 77 Sunset Strip. The flashy detective series ran from 1958 through 1964 and starred Ephraim Zimblis Jr. and Roger Smith as government agents. Ed Burns appeared as a parking lot attendant named Gerald Lloyd Cookson III, or Cookie for short. He helped out when he wasn't parking cars. Other regulars were a beautiful French phone operator named Suzanne and Roscoe, the racetrack tout played by Louis Quinn. Ed Burns even sang the song, Kooky Kooky, Lend Me Your Comb, which became a smash hit when he and Connie Stevens recorded it. When I'm flying solo, nowhere's where I'm at. 77 Sunset Strip. For six years on TV, they made you feel like it was just down the block. She got away. What? How long ago? Five minutes ago. She locked me in the closet and flew. Well, how'd she manage it? Well, I'd rather not say, but I'm off love. <laughs> Would you please join me in a great big warm welcome for 77 Sunset Strips, Ephraim Jones Jr., Ed Burns, and Louis Quinn. I'd like to know what that means. You are off love. I'd what like does that, that mean? <laughs> I guess I, they were uh, having a lot of dates during that, uh, that time of period. I need a little rest period. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm ready for love right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ephraim, let me ask you. Today, um, TV shows, primetime TV shows, do not have the longevity that yours did. Yours lasted a long time. What do you, why do you think it was such a hit? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I think it was a different time, Sarah. It was a very lighthearted time. People had fun. There was, there was a, we, were, we were, you know, we, we had no set format. We could just pretty much do, go in any direction that we wanted to. And then it was, it was, it was an easier time, I think. Let me talk to Louis too about you were hired as a writer. Yeah. And you were writing scripts for the shows. Can you imagine and how desperate they were. <laughs> <laughs> and they asked you no, to write in a character. And they brought me over. They had two shows, Warner Brothers Pre Presents and Kings Row. Both of them got canceled. So I thought was I was going to lose my job. Row. That's right. And uh, they had just done a pilot for a show called, a picture called Girl on the Run, in which Eddie Burns was the heavy believe it or not. He was the killer. <gasps> and a note came across my desk and it said, Louie, try to think of a sometime running character for a show called 77 Sunset Strip. So I did. I patterned a character called Roscoe after my favorite vaudevillian, Ted Healy and the Stooges. I dressed him like Ted Healy and I made him a racetrack tout. Uh -huh. You see? Uh -huh. Now, I suggested three people to play him. Joey Fay. Herschel Bernardi, and one other chap that's married to Imogen Coco now, what's his name? King Donovan. Uh -huh. They all wanted $150 for the day's work. Warner's paid $90 in the, those days. That's it. Take it or leave it. 90 bucks a day. Uh -huh. Now Jack Warner called me in the office with Bill Orr, his son-in-law, and Hugh Benson. And they said, kid, you're going to play the character. I says, I never acted in my life. He says, you wrote this stuff, you can play it. I said, I don't belong to the guild. This will get you a card. So they got me a card, and they took $25 a week out of my salary till the card was paid for. <laughs> True. Really? Did you yeah. get the 90 a week? No, 90 a day. 90 a day? No, I was getting two, three eighty-seven fifty as, as a, a, a script editor. 
they gave me another twelve dollars and twenty five cents or something for being an actor you wrote the part and starred in it for twelve yes, bucks and i got twelve and a half dollars and they called me up in the legal office and signed me to a hyphenate contract actor writer oh and then i told mr zimbalist's agent what i was getting he says i'll get you a good deal so he got negotiated he got me fifty dollars a week more Aww. And that was good and boy the rest is history we're gonna be right back with some more memories from 77 since this trip We're back with Ethan Zimmer, Senior Ed Burns, and Louis Quinn from 77 Sunset Strip. Ed, the, the character Kooky said yeah, things like Ginchy. Yeah, the Ginchiest <laughs> piling up Z's. You had a great hit single in Kooky Kooky, Lend Me Your Comb. What, what did everyone love about Kooky? <laughs> that I worked with Ephraim. Oh, no. Uh, As a matter of fact, what I, everybody loved about Kooky was that he was the hottest thing around. I mean, he could not have walked into this studio with this young audience here. He would, they would have torn the clothes off him, they'd have screamed, they'd have burned. You can't imagine the... When the, he tries to get out. <laughs> no, they got to let him out. Four magazine covers in one month. <laughs> True story. You know something? I think that breaks Tom Johnson's record. 24 magazine covers I think on the cover. One of the scariest times I've experienced was I got off an airplane in Chicago, and I had 18,000 people waiting for me, and I thought, you know, the president was coming. Coming in, and they said, "No, they're waiting for you, Ed, because I had a movie opening there then." Oh my God! You know, that was it was scary. You know, it was really scary. Scary but yeah, exciting. Scary. Well, what What was it about the character Kooky that people love besides well, the fact that you were incredibly handsome? Uh, I think the concept of the and series, <laughs> uh, all of us working together. Uh, he, I was one of the first younger men on TV. You know, he and was, the he character was also very nice. Kooky was very yeah, nice. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's easy to have a character like that who's kind of, you know, seedy and raunchy or whatever, but he was, he was very decent. He was, he's did good things, he did kind mm, things. That's right. Yeah. Now, your daughter is, is following in your footsteps to the degree that she's playing a detective on Remington Steel. Stephanie, how do you feel about that? You know, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing, Mac, but the, the, the closest thing that I can think of to 77 Sunset Strip is Remington Steel. It's that kind of a show. It's loose, it's, it's, uh, it's tongue-in-cheek, it, it, it can be bent one way or the other pretty easily, you know. It's a very similar format. And uh, it's odd that, that so many years later she should be doing a show like that, you know. Have you given her any advice? I wouldn't dare. Oh. She gives me some. Don't act. <laughs> <laughs> Don't act. Don't right. act. Don't get no. caught acting. <laughs> Well, you know, it's really funny because I remember back then, too, that um, I came up from San Diego and, of course, the very first thing that we had to go see was the location for 77 Sunset Strip on Sunset Boulevard. You can still see it today. Now, Louie, in, to, uh, yeah. yeah. in addition to writing, yeah. you did some of your own stunts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did one stunt. Standing I, up was the toughest one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have my cigar for my timing and they had me on, over a prison wall. I had to go onto a tractor. And I'll never forget the director to this day, Les, Les Martinson. Uh, Martinson. He said, don't worry, we're going to put a stunt double in. I just want you to get over the wall and into the seat. And the boys had sent me on this caper, and I'm in prison. And I go over the wall, and the stunt man is not there. And I took a 15-foot footer, and uh, I was in Cedars of Lebanon for 15 days in traction. Oh my I love gosh. you telling yeah. the story. These end guys are sitting here story. laughing. <laughs> sure, they're laughing. Sure. Sure. Do you still smoke cigars? No. No. I hated him. It's like Eddie Robinson. I worked a picture with him. Hated him. You know, and he'd have the big cigar. The, the minute they'd take, too. he'd throw it on the floor and he'd say, somebody give me a cigarette. We had to use them for matching shots. United Cigar Company would send me boxes of them that I used to give to everybody. They were cheap cigars. <laughs> you know, some oh. of these guys has been the ginchiest. The ginchiest, yeah. It really has been. We, we're, we're not going to be piling up any Z's for a while. I'll, no. I'll tell you something. I saw in Century City last month two girls with clipboards getting a petition to get 77 Sunset Strip I'll back sign on. It. I'll Me sign it. Me too. I Thank you it. for I sharing your memories with us. We really appreciate it. You guys are the greatest. We'll be right back after this.